Oh, would you look at that? Will still in line for Taylor Swift tickets. Nobody tell them they're not on sale. Welcome to Open Mic. You know we like to start the show with a few stories or a hot take on a story you're not likely to see anywhere else. I'm from gorgeous Prince George's, and now I spill the tea in DC so you know these jokes come from a place of love. If in fact, that was something I was capable of. But then again, when is a man in a purple sweater not capable of love? Bless you. Let's start things off at the Fort Totten Metro Station in DC, where Metro displayed two new prototypes for entry gates that are designed to combat fare evasion. Huh. Not bad, Metro. Now, I wouldn't exactly call them menacing, but they'll stop fair evaders that aren't in good shape, especially the second one. I mean, getting past that requires a basic mastery of parkour. And we actually got video of people already skipping over them today anyways. Look at that. Just at least give some credit and some acknowledgement of the new gates. I wonder how conspicuous these cameras were. People just really have no shame. But then again, you know what? This is a way to not try and put on airs, you know? Be who you always were. That was a, that was a solid, that was a solid 7.8. If, if I could hold up a score for that, that, that uh, evader. If I were a fair evader, I would, I would accuse Metro of, of fat shaming. Get them canceled as payback for ruining the scam. Sadly, it's hard to take the moral high ground when you're using it to steal. But Metro, Good luck with these prototypes. This could be a glimpse into the future of DC Transit, unless it fails. Then it was just one long drawn out episode of America Ninja Warrior featuring local scammers. And by the way, if you know who that was who did the full run up and then the jump, I would love to hear about it. That sounds like a future greatest hit. Let's stay in DC for this next story, where a study by beauty and grooming website Style Seat has determined the most popular facial hairstyles in the DC area. They even made a chart, you know, like those little posters that you see at the barbershop. And if the poster on the wall of your barbershop looks like that, you shouldn't be paying anything over $3. Now, according to this study, Virginia and Maryland preferred the lumberjack look called Van Holtz, while DC opted for stubble, which by the way, is the mullet of beards. Now it's the style you wear when you wake up with just enough time to get to work after a night of partying. This study, by the way, I personally think is bogus because it left off the most important beard style to ever exist, the Reese. That's right. This is what happens when your writers try and use Photoshop. But I personally think the Reese is, is not only elegant, but practical. And it comes from a, a lifetime of, of growth and not shaving at all. That is literally all that I can do. But as far as mustaches, DC opted for the handlebar which, by the way, is a little bit more dandy than I expected. Maryland and Virginia went with the English style. Now, I can't grow a mustache, so you're in luck. No more bad photoshops for the time being, although it was, a, it was a solid try, Leon Scott. I chose this next story out of Boston because you can never have enough research studies. A consumer advocacy group called World Against Toys Causing Harm, also known as Watch, has released a list of the 10 worst toys of 2022. Toys that kill. Now, in other words, this is like basically the plot to child's play. Now, I'll admit, some of these toys do look dangerous. I personally love Black Panther, as you guys heard on this very program this week. But this right here is gonna get somebody maimed. Like the kid in the picture looked like he's about to pour a glass of grape Kool-Aid call it heart-shaped herb, then scratch everybody on the school bus, because that's exactly what I would have done if I had this toy. And then you have this Nerf Pro Gel Fire Mystic Blaster. You know what? I know a BB gun when I see one. Y'all ain't slick. You'll shoot your eye out, Ralphie, or whoever buys this. All I know is an eye's ending up somewhere missing. Next, we have this bunny rabbit cuddly pillow. Oh, look at that. Like this couldn't possibly hurt anybody, right? It looks innocent. Reportedly, this has the potential for suffocation. Now who would have thought this little pink bunny was a silent assassin? Now I'm making fun of the toys on this list, but you guys be careful while shopping this holiday season, or if you're like me, be careful while shopping December 23rd. 
According to the Consumer Product Safety Commission, there were an estimated 198,000 toy-related injuries in the United States in 2020 and a reported 51 deaths from toy-related incidents from 2018 to 2020. Now, I know this story ended on a bummer note. Just don't buy your kids claws or guns or cuddly rabbit pillows and you should be good. Let's head out to Van Wert County, Ohio. That can't be good whenever it starts like that. For this last story, where somebody broke into a farm and released over 25,000 carnivorous mink. When it comes to the group or individual responsible for vandalizing the farm and releasing the minks, police say it's still under investigation. But Meyer believes ALF, or the Animal Liberation Front, is responsible because of this spray-painted message that was found on the farm. Liberation Front? You mean Mink have a whole black ops team? Now, according to a post by the Sheriff's Office, Minks are carnivorous mammals that stick to a diet consisting of fresh kills. Yes, they regularly hunt prey bigger than themselves. And as a result, they can be a bothersome pest for homeowners, livestock owners, and property managers. Now, minks have proven to be especially costly and problematic for poultry ranchers, as well as homeowners with ornamental ponds filled with koi and other fish. Now, I want to take this seriously. I really do. But carnivorous mink, I'm sorry, that sounds, that sounds hilarious. Like they're going on a soft, elegant murder spree. Let's hope that they can get this situation under control, but only after this guy finishes his Christmas shopping, because he's working hard not to have to buy any presents. My favorite story today, I got to go with the murder mink. I had no idea they were little soft-haired killing machines. Who knew?